where to engage into them through the trap line, through the Lux bindings and everything like that. And, and that is going to be the choice here. So um, really intelligent drafts, I think, on both sides. I actually do kind of like on the Caitlyn now. This does give Machi an overall three versus two teleport lead. Oh, you're in trouble. But now, there comes your Wombo combo with the damage, baby. Click, click, boom. Tactical's on the board. Welcome to the world's group stage. Tactical, the NA rookie grabbing first blood off a great binding. But Gemini looking to fight back here in the mid lane. Here we go. Nice follow-up from... Risk of dying. So I, I like this gank here from Machi, but Impact is playing it fairly slowly. Oh, Impact going to walk right up into the brush. And there you go, Gemini. Putting in so much work in these solo lanes. Just so unlucky for Gemini because Mission was actually moving up. Yeah. If Volibear's still in that brush and you just get Volibear stunned into an ultimate there, now PK, he has no flash and he's ulted up and Brox is behind him. He's in trouble. PK's stuck in the Shadow Realm. Impact just making sure that he's not able to walk far enough away. Just box him in the head with no. Minutes into the game means you won't see a super early Drake Soul, even if they go four for four there. But this is another just bonus for Machi to have under their belts. Make this game a little bit closer. We I mean, gotta give credit over to both Mission and Bruce. As the red buff will be stolen away, Syndra doing what she can with that one. Meanwhile, topside, it's first turret of the game over to Machi. Multiple trips up towards that top lane, trying to help about PK, uh, and as a result, they do cash in on that first turret. Machi is in it too because he's made multiple trips, it feels like, over towards that Raptor pit. He is just not missing any CS in lane. Teal do grab themselves a dragon in here. that top lane, working on the tier one. Impact stays alive in the bottom lane, but he's going to lose the tier one down there. It's trading back and forth, left and right, top and bottom, all over the map. Bottom lane tier one falls to the side of Team Liquid. Top lane tier one falls to the side of Machi. Tier one turret and the subsequent headbutt off on the tier two to put lasting damage on that later. We'll see how much value TL is able to get out of theirs. Mission sidestepping away from the ball, mid lane tier one step turret. back. Will they find the opportunity? Ooh, he's looking good. Oh, Jensen, he flashes away, but it will not be enough. Gemini takes was quick on the flash, but couldn't get the Seraphs off. Not sure if it would have saved him or not, but it is Machi grabbing the kill. It is mechanism Machi. is run at the other dude fast. Feels really good mm -hmm. to run really fast at the other dude. So Gemini in particular on this volley bear now might have what he needs tactical. And focus down those frontliners. Trying to set up here for a potential pick onto mission, but again, no hard engage makes it pretty tough to actually look for it. Okay, bottom side is the 1v1 between Mordekaiser and Orn. Now, Impact seems to be doing all right right about now. Using the ulti on the PK. Flash away coming out from He's the Orn. Die, TPs have showed up. Impact cannot kill him off in time. He wants to try to get away, but the entirety of Machi shows up to make sure PK's not in a bad spot. Impact was all right until it didn't become a 1v1 any longer. Brox is on the top side. He'll pick up a Scuttle Crab as the trade, but you don't want to be trading. No, some's on tactical. He's going to die. Crab. Tactical, what are you doing there, my friend? He tries to get Whoa. himself out. Nicely done. The reversal from TL. Grab the kill onto Koala, but now it's Love not. You. The Volibear is beside you, and the Syndra is in front of you. So you are a dead Caitlyn, and hey. Machi gonna go to Soul Point. That's a dead Drake, because guess what? Machi. Broxa on the Graves can easily be one-shot by Mission Syndra. He has a Spellbinder with 100 stats. Machi's just going for the finish. Baron's at 3,000 HP. This is gonna be the fight for the Baron. It's secured by the Ezreal like of all. All semblances of vision, you know, around those neutral objectives. And TL, I don't know how they're even gonna get to that next dragon without dying, honestly. Well, the game has been kept pretty close by TL in terms of overall gold so far, but now that Machi have the Red Bull Baron buff, now that Machi are in a spot for the next minute and a half where they control this huge bonus in terms of their pushing and map control, this is where you expect to see that bleeding turn into a hemorrhage. Mm -hmm. This is where you expect to see Machi take the game to a point where Team Liquid no Baron and nothing else and will give over that soul, but... You are giving Machi every single little Waves bit of pushing. Machi wants to make sure that they have the entire map choked off and just strangled. Make this Syndra at any point in time. Tactical and Impact also going to be zoned off here. Gemini maintaining aggro on the Baron. Lux ulti fired through. Over the wall goes Bruce and Machi. They have control over the Baron. Team Liquid, that's the third true shot barrage in like two minutes. Tactical's nearly taken out now as well, down to about one third HP. TL has no a way to approach this. They just cannot get near this Baron at all. Brox is looking for the steal. He knows he can't just give this away into the pit. He goes and will not matter. Secured by the Syndra. Brox is juggled around, but he gets back over the wall. Actually just maintain this position around the Elder for a full minute when the opponents have the Baron buff. You're gonna lose control mid lane. Tactical finally gets a couple of auto attacks off onto Bruce, but it won't really amount to much of anything. Tactical the flank. Is lower HP. Here comes PK! There's your Ornhorn, but he's not going to find the second half. Jensen with a shockwave onto two. Jensen in the ground. Machi has priority over mid lane. Broxa tries to retreat, and Team Liquid 
is just not looking prepared for their main stage opponent here in Machi, who have just been in control for so long in this game. Isaac Tactical, he's trying to buy some time, but it doesn't matter. What does that mean when Mission is in the base? Tactical is dead. There comes Volibear over the top rope, and Core JJ is down. Gemini's on a killing spree, and the mid lane is just being crushed by Super Minions, crushed by Bruce. This Ezreal knows exactly what his limits are and what he is capable of. Mission fires off the ulti. Impact's going golden. Now Impact's likely going down. Double stasis, that's cute. Don't matter too much. Gemini stays alive in the ulti. He's going to be beat up by Mordekaiser, but that's a small consolation prize to get when your Nexus is under fire and 37 minutes in. Machi takes If you go Bard Ezreal, uh, you are looking to just get through that laning phase, and you're looking to roam, right? You can yeah. leave Ezreal in the 1v2 very comfortably. Yes, you have to respect the engage right, especially mantle, right? So uh, he was able to grab that, and we'll see if Ooh. he can secure this. Yanko steps up to take the enemy chickens, oh, no. but Yankos... You don't think that to use it before he died at that chicken camp. But now, Sooning are after the Drake. Should secure this one without really any contest here. They didn't even have a smite for that. But now G2 is coming in looking to stop him. Sword Art over the wall trying to stay alive. Uses the Blast Cone, gets himself away. Mickey... So he cannot answer this and... The oh, big side Sword step. Art just barely sidestepping away. Dredge line into the wall. spider manning himself out of this one. As the follow comes through, they're looking to maybe make it a trade. Instead, it's going to be Sword Art going down. Yanko's still going to be kept alive. Nice outplay there, but it's still going to be a one-for-one -one trade with the junglers after the fact. Support plus jungler traded away for jungler two for one at the end of the day and G2 comes out on top. They do, but the question is how much are you going to lose on the bottom side? Because they're bleeding out farm now here and we have to take that in consideration. But Angel now getting caught up. He's in trouble. Now this could be pretty big. Angel goes for the return kill on perks, but we kind of ha had a, an inkling that maybe Suning was looking for a play on him. His team doesn't really have any vision on this side of the map. He hasn't seen a lot of the members. So first turret of the game. Wonder building very likely towards the the Black Cleaver plus Iceborne style of build. Uh, this is very popular in the LPL. Now he jumps in for some chickens. <laughs> it's the kick on the Yankos. Will not be able to stick around and take those chickens. These no chicken fear. camps are incredibly deadly. Aggressively, this he plays without almost any fear. You know, he shows mid lane, goes to that play, and then he's like, yep, I'm just going to engage and, and fall like this. To have died more against G2, who is such a good team at punishing you. The difference between risk and calculated risk and forcing the issue. Bin is right there in the brush. Could be able to Jack engage his ultimate. This one. It's almost up, and he has a perfect flank position. Sword there it goes. goes in. There comes your damage. So much going to be poured down onto the G2 lines, and Perks is already out of the fight. Wonder tries to jump back in. That's a one for one trade. Wonder for Sword Art. Now the Drake is the target. Soon in going after this one. Mickey's over the wall. Caps and Yankos both still here. The Drake's going to reset a little bit. It's still at half HP. Sooning still working on this one. Over the wall comes Yankos. He's in the pit. He's looking to maybe steal this one away. The Drake is going to be taken low. It's secured by Caps. You gotta be kidding! For a tower with TF and things like this, that could be really, really critical in this game because Sooning have been in full control, it feels like. Ooh, Sword Art tried to engage there, but the dredge line only finds terrain, and now Sword Art's in a really bad spot. True Shot Barrage nearly finding the kill. Sword Art walking away. Now, last Mystic Shot will not find him. SOFM looking to engage on the top side here as Angel's gonna be caught oh, out. That tries ward. to go for the Blast Cone. attack the Blast Cone to get out of there. Mickey with a huge play. We'll see if SOFM can get in here. He's in trouble. SOFM's going to get no killed bumps. by Perks if he's not careful. He flashes over the wall. Sword Art's going to engage now. Enchanted Crystal Arrow comes through and Perks is dead. Mickey with the flashback over the wall. Bins in a 1v3 looking to maintain the aggro on the rest of the G2 squad. Down, it's guaranteed incredible amounts of value from Ocean Soul, so they must contest. Sword Art tries to engage, and once again, the dredge line only finding the terrain. Nice counterattack coming through from G2. Sword Art's nearly killed. He tries to walk himself away, but a nice Bard ulti finds its way on a Han Fung and the enemy mid laner with Angel in some trouble. It's now Sword Art going to be taken out. Bin looking to find the damage into the back line. Mickey's going to be taken low, and Sooning with a beautiful counterattack. Arrows through the hearts of every single samurai in the fight. G2 tries to fall back. The teleports are coming in, and now can Caps get away? I don't think so. Play your last pathetic card. Double kill for Juan Fung. Four dead for G2. Soul point for Suning. S O -N. for themselves here. It's up in 10 seconds. Bin is already in a flank spot. Has not yet been spotted here. And look at look at this. S this, this is a big moment here in this game. Cap fires off the ulti, but it's going to be a catch down on the perks. Looking for some of the damage onto him. Nearly able to finish him off. Now they're going to find the kill. It's Yankos down as Bins dive into the back line. Once again, going to be disrupting multiple people on the side of G2. Dredge line not finding the mark. Sooning is able to find the kill, but they're all down low HP. Juan Fung nearly dead. Flashing out, keeping himself alive. G2 disengaging, Whoa. still looking to escape the periphery of this 
fight. The Scuttle Crab is up, the Scuttle Crab is down. Securing that one is guaranteed vision over the Drake Pit. G2, they're still in good enough condition to fight. They're going forward, they're able to find the kill. Now down onto Sword Art. Mickey X is gonna be taking low SOFM, looking to jump into the fight. Ben's gonna be trading the kill there, one for one. But now it's Swan Fung in trouble. Perk's going after him, the Ash is down. And G2 responds, but here comes Angel. Can he send Perks to the afterlife? Yes, he will. There you go. See you later. Wonders having to run out of this one and just when things look doomed for G2, Angel comes back and facilitates the end of the fight that will provide them the Ocean Soul. Caps did it once. Can Caps do it again with the wild cards over the wall? He throws them through. They will not find the mark. The dragon is slain. The ocean soul for soon. And your opponents get the ocean soul. Yeah, there's a bramble vest on Wonder, but remember the bramble vest also depends on him being auto attacked to apply the grievous wounds. So it's not really going to do anything against Angel or against Sword Art if he's just applying CC. Now Suning's pushing down the mid lane. G2 actually decreased the gold gap in this game with the last fight. But Suning's still pushing up. TP coming through. Sword Art with the engage on the Mickey X. The damage comes out. Angel's going for the kill, but he won't be able to find it. Now engage from Wonder onto the back line. Juan Fung trying to disengage. SOFM barely going to be kept alive. Sword Art also walks away, but bends into the back line. Engaging 1v5 all alone. Slashing and dashing and crashing. Angel finds the kill onto Wonder. Where's the Sonic Wave? Resonating Strike not going to be coming through just yet. SOFM not able to find the kill. One for one overall. Make it a two. Fifty on that steal as the red buff is secured. SOFM has that one. Enchanted Crystal Arrow flies out. Perk's gonna use the QSS, getting himself away. Caps will not be hit by the dredge line, but SOFM is going in. SOFM is exhausted. Bard ulti finds its way on the Sword Art and Sword Art alone. SOFM still looking to find some more onto Caps. SOFM is alone. SOFM nearly gonna Tanky. be taken out. Has to get back to the safety of the team. Ben and the ulti now having to run away as well. Suning. They tried to go for it. They tried to look for some capture potential. Onto that pick on Caps. Flash coming in from Bin. Follow up dredge line won't find the mark. Suning may have overestimated their engage potential, and now they're going to be eating some damage on the back end of the fight. The True Shot Barrage comes through. The Mikhail's there was so big from Mickey. They knew there was no cleanse on flat on, on Caps, so Bin went for it. But Mickey was there with the Mikhail, saving his mid laner again. G2 Here playing it so well. For the kill, and they found it. Angel has been destroyed, and Suning is in a 4v5. G2 is looking for more now. They're finding the gold card. It's on to SOFM. Sword Art's going in, looking to buy some time, looking to protect his valuable members of his team. Lee Sin has to disengage. Juan Fung running away now too. Suning losing their mid laner. Proper team play, protecting each other, kiting out the CC, disengaging when Suning tries to deal with them. Now they have to fight through this Elder Drake fight. They have it aggro, they're the ones tanking it. Suning still sticking around, they don't want to give this away for free, but they make the call to go in and fight 4v5, it looks like they do, yes they will. Mickey's in some trouble, Enchanted Crystal Arrow flies out, Suning going in for the fight, Wonder in the middle of four people, Two Shot Barrage coming through, finds the kill onto Huang Fung. Sword Art's taking all the damage down, Mystic Shot over the wall, Perks with the follow-up, able to find the kill. SOFM's still alive, but he's down to one third HP, he goes in, he's looking to steal the drink, but he will not be able to do it. Here's a losing hand, buddy! Yankos ends up grabbing the kill, facilitated by Caps, and G2 will take the Elder Drake. One of five flowers, that was incredible. But Ingo's Wonder stuns him up. He has the flash, but he could not get out of there. The ultimate from Perks now, coming. Suning are the ones having to respect G2. G2 up 5,000 gold. Damage dealt in the last fight, 10,000. Is that the what? broke? 10,000 damage. Wait, is that the whole game or is that the last fight? Because that is insane. That's the last fight because it says 312 for Angel. <laughs> Ain't no way he did 312 damage True, in the whole yes. game. True, yes. That is insane. Holy moly, man. Now, G2 with the Baron, with the Elder. This Red Bull Baron buff could be the end of the game right here. Su Ning must defend against a double Uber buff G2. Can they end the game right now? True Shot Barrage finds Angel, takes about one third of the health. First Nexus turret is gone. Ben is in the mid lane. Ben, you need to get Run back fast, to the Nexus. Little crocodile. You gotta get back over there, man. You gotta help your boys. Su Ning are truly in a spot that could end this game for them right now. But the Elder Drake is such an X They're factor. Trying to wait here. it out. 30 more seconds. They've got to survive another half minute. They need to clear this wave away. G2 want to stop them. Enchanted Crystal Arrow fired off, looking for some damage. On to Yankos. Ben goes into the ultimate, keeping himself alive. G2's on the push. G2's looking to make the play. Wonder into the dive, looking to disable the turret, keeping things going. Wonder's going to be killed off. Juan Fung taking that one. Beautiful scatter the weekend. Send them running. 
So FM goes in. He tries to dodge away. A little bit more damage would trigger the Elder Dragon, but they won't be able to find it. The dredge line now Caps down to the, the main back. X, looking to find the kill. Caps into the back line, trying to find the wild cards, trying to find the damage. Caps is going to be barely escaping. The damage down onto the remaining players. Perks is out. Caps is throwing the cards around, looking to finish off the Nexus turn. He won't be able to do it. And it's an ace. But the question is, will they be able to hold without Caps and Perks? And is Suning even willing to go for it? Because they have lost these last couple fights. Maybe they want to go for it. Give me five games of this pop directly into my veins. This is Worlds. This is League of Legends. This is Suning. Looking to end the game. Nexus turrets being kept alive now by the Bard ulti. Perks and Cap's going to be coming up here in just a moment. Suning going for the game ending push. Going for the team fight. Looking to find the damage. Wonders going into the ulti now. Looking to mount the defense. Ben runs away. Wongfung's going to be taken low. Wonders the first one to die. And Yankos is nearly going to be killed off now. Where's the focus going to be? Players or Nexus? They hold! It is one for one. They're trying to kite themselves back. Wongfung stays alive. Using the QSS. Keeping himself in a good spot. Cap's coming in with the ulti. Gold card goes out. Wongfung goes down. Sword Art Caps is gone. Gets TP. Caps is going Going in. He uses the ulti, getting himself in a good spot now as the TP comes through from G2. They're into the top lane of the base. It's Perks, baby! Knock, knock! Open the hell up! The Nexus is the target! Suning's advance is resisted! G2 has persisted! And Perks insisted on a win in this game! This is League of Legends, baby! What a game! Between G2 and Suning! Access to the tower to be able to punish GP by taking plates, by pressuring him there. And that got locked, so that, so um, we will see. He I think that he's is dead. just a tragedy. He's not level three, so he has no up, yeah. W. Level two, you're on the gangplank. No mana left to work with first, but they made it look so. Just roams away from Ghost and just sits here in the jungle. Plus the fact that Showmaker is constantly pushing. They have all these winning lanes. And can, can be really, really nasty engage on low mobility champions like Ghost. Dom Wong's going in to the mid enemy mid laner here. Larson's in some trouble. Tries to flash away, evading the damage. Collateral damage comes through, but an amazing turnaround. He's able to find the kill on the barrel here, and now it's going to be a two for one. Showmaker tries to get himself out, but hot. The fact that they get those kills, this is going to be an over 3,000 gold lead, very likely, when it's all said and done here. Uh, Nothing gone. but Hunter's Talisman in the inventory is 14 minutes. That's generally where you would want to try to have that completed by. Yeah. However, he did stop off for the completed Smite first, as Showmaker's trying to trade here with Larson in the mid lane, but Barrel showing up. This time he gets the shield down. He blocks all the damage Barrel's coming out. Die. He missed the spear! Looks like they won't. It would have to be a four and a half versus five with only GP ulti. So that down one just below half it. already. One headbutt will take care of this one. Here we go. And bonk. Turret taking care. <laughs> And despite the gold advantage, they are all very squishy. This Lulu could die in an instant. So could the Graves, if you can time everything. There's a lot of squishiness. Everybody's just walking around the center, trading spots, seeing when the music is going to stop. Showmaker walking towards that tri brush. As TP shows up from Larson arriving back into the fight. Drake is down to half HP. Over the wall goes Showmaker. Go. Could find his engage right now. Drake's at 2,500. There's spears in it. Hansama might be able to go in. There comes Cosmic Radiance. The dragon is secured by Rogue. They got the objective. Can they get out? There's the Callista ulti over the wall. Comes Showmaker, but he won't find any. Saving off Soul Point from Dom Juan. And also, credit to knowing their limits. It seems like they really know until just now. Well, they're aware. The TP is showing up. Dom Juan ready to make the attack. The teleport will be jumped on, and Finn tries to get away. Now inspired, Dom Juan still continue building leads in this game. The respect that Rogue shows them means that Dom Juan are able to keep playing League of Legends how they want to, and the way they want to is right, this is the one that we have to sacrifice. It's still not Soul. Yes, it's going to put them in a bad spot going forward, having to fight for everyone thereafter, but they're just not in a good spot here. The arrow doesn't find the engage onto Han Sama, but he's putting a lot of damage down on the barrel, nearly able to kill him off, and there he is, Gallop, Gallop. Barrel not on point here, not coordinated. Barrel has had a lot of missteps this game. We'll see. Like stacking up spears during your Terek ultimate. So Dom Juan really want to try to get a fight right now. Oh, Larson is caught out. The damage comes through and he's going to be killed before Cosmic Radiance. This could finally. Let's ultimate out. If it was Hansami, he could cleanse it, but nothing there for him. And Rogue trying to get an angle. Inspired looks like he wants to try to go for the steal. We'll see if he can find Inspire it. Inspire going in for the 50 50. Is he going to be able to do it? Looking to maybe take down the Baron. No, he will not. Nagari gets the kill. Susceptible person to that and stepped a little bit too far forward looking for that file. Instead, they're going to regroup with him in the bottom lane. Ghost and Nagari right next to him. Canyon's feeling plenty comfortable here. That mountain, which means Showmaker just gets free hitting time. 
on the mid lane tier three. That one's gonna lose about three quarters of its health. Now Ghost is able to step up in the bottom lane. And this is where things get really dicey for Rogue. This is where split seconds can break the game because you've gotta be picking and choosing when you go in. That ultimate was not it. There's a whole bunch of things that could have been it, but that is not it. Over the wall goes Vander looking to keep himself alive. Inspire gonna be tanking up in the middle of all five. Showmaker grabbing the kill onto Vander, two down. We have been complimenting Rogue's synergy. Rogue's team play, Rogue's ability to avoid that axe hanging over their head this entire game. But when they tried to go in in the bottom lane, everything was out of sync. The Cosmic Radiance way too early. The Gangplank ulti didn't end up setting up for anything. And now Dawn is looking for that death blow. Showmaker tries to go in. He tosses his ally in there. Canyon with the damage. The remaining three players of Rogue trying to heal up, trying to maybe mount some sort of a defense here. The minion wave is still at the Nexus turrets and those are gone. The damage pours onto the Rogue health bars. Larson is eliminated and the volleys continue flying. Canyon tanks the turret even for a split second there in the Nexus and that is it, Dom Juan victory. Move the Orn in the front line. They're gonna rely on him to face check these objectives, act as that main priority tank. Meanwhile, JDG, they're gonna mix things up. It looks like that we're gonna get the echo Just in the wall here. Lumao's gonna clear that one out with the sweeper. Navi actually takes it in the end. Kaiwing and Unify, what have they got? They've got the cleanse, they've got a heal. Is that enough to get away from the JDG dive? Lumao caught out underneath the tower, but it was Loken tanking, and there's the first kill of the game. Well, PSG is in danger. And Navi just hit six and leveled up the Call of the Forge God, and now Lumao's coming up with the Agao. There's the showstopper to try and pull River away from the turret. The knockup's gonna come through, but already the kill goes down. JDG. Still get what they want. Now they have their eyes set on tank. The stun coming through. Here it comes. No shift going to be available as well. Yagao dives underneath the turret. Tank just has nowhere to go. One more auto. Yagao swipes away and vision from your opponent, and your roams become so much more potent. And PSG are trying to stop that by going in on the bottom lane. Deadly Flourish lands on Loken, and there's nowhere for him to go. Hanabi will take the kill. Investment, of course, Zoom still has his, but he'll stay up in the top lane for now. Hanabi's actually looking to get in here. Magical Journey's available for PSG, and they're just going to run out of the pit. The Dragon isn't low enough for River, and he can't get the order as attacks off. Almost goes down in the end, secured by Yagao. The PSG can look to contest because they've lost the mid priority. This is going to be easy for JDG. JDG oh don't care. God. They're Diamond's going for the dead. fights. You can't do that to a bard. He's just around here collecting his meeps and getting some chimes. And here comes the Starfall. Lumao is going to dive the turret in the top lane. And he still has the Aegis Assault. Unit by down. Lumao gets the second. 140 gold picked off the turrets through that plating. PSG with a big fat null point. Zero as well in team fights, but you look at the threat that comes out from JDG. You've got Zoom to disengage Anabi if he ever goes in. You've got your Gao diving onto your back. The early game, that's falling apart. JDG, they're not slowing down. They're looking for another play mid. I mean, getting caught up in the Paolo convergence. Pops the stopwatch, but uh, only stops time for a second tempo. Fake gets a double go golden. Call of the Forge is going to come through as well, but Kai Wing is already done for. Jada Crystal Hour goes wide as now they dive onto tank. Kanavi steals away his ult, says anything you can do, I can do slightly worse right now. As <laughs> JDG, they've extended their goal lead to what? Is that 7.5, 8k now in yeah. their favor, 16.5 minutes in. This was the dominant. If you look back to that Dragon play earlier when they were at a number six advantage, have to hold that as you go on a 1v3. He still has the Chrono Shift and the Power Lock Convergence, going to dive onto River and the Magical Journey took everyone away from him, and now River has to flash, get to the Magical Journey, but the Chrono Shift Ooh. is enough. Yagao and Kanavi opening up, Call of the Forge God was used, I believe. No, it wasn't. That was the Grand Star Fall. As Lumao joined the fight. And this is the calculated skirmishing yeah. we were talking about. Look at how patient Yagao was. Oh. 1v3, he does not mind, and now they're going for the die. Oh, Unified like he was doing everything he should do in that situation. He was backing away from the tower. He was saying, yep, you guys can have it. And now the Tempered Fate comes out as Hanabi tries to join the fray. But so far, we have yet to see a JDG player die. And there's the third from PSG. There's the fourth. Make it five. JDG with a clean ace in the bottom lane. Wow. And the only reason why is because River just respawned. JDG are absolutely dismantling PSG. 19 minutes into the game, they're looking to break into the base. PSG have no answers. JDG are 11,000 gold ahead at the 19 minute mark. This is a demolition to say the least. And they are answering the people who yesterday questioned whether they should be still tournament favorites.
Medic, it was you that said yes. And uh, PSG in a very difficult situation right now. Of course, they're looking like they're going to be going 0-2 in the group stages. They still have the Bard ultimate to try and stall this objective out. Gonna have Zoom tank things up. Let's see what Yagao does. He has the TP, the Bard ulti comes through. TP flank, this is exactly TP coming out. as Lou now trying to jump onto the RB. Call of the Forge God wasn't used back in the spot, but here comes the curtain call. Yagao has a good flank position onto River, but he is isolated from the team. Curtains are open. Loken the target. Kanavi was able just to escape from the side. There's the arrow coming back in, and Yagao dives forward. And here comes the showstopper. Zoom into the back line. One down, two down, make it three, make it four, and make it five as JDG just sweep away at PSG. Tank almost escapes, but Yagao's having none of that. Chases him down. The ace comes out for JDG. They didn't even need the Baron. Wow. So initially, that fight did not look great for JDG. Kanavi getting chunked out, Lumao dying almost immediately, but the gold advantage they have is just too big. They're looking to get themselves a 23-minute victory, and JDG back on form. JDG slapping PSG around with their wallets. They will claim their first win of Worlds. And what a dominant performance from JDG as well. Zero hesitation. Okay. I mean, it's Bjergsen Zillion. I understand it's not perfect sure. in the composition, but it's Bjergsen Zillion. Like, this guy is just so well known for this champ. He has Palmer and the Ezreal. There's going to be a lot of harassment, but here's Speaker, level three, looking for the gank. Aggression can cost you as Speaker comes up towards the top lane. A Rascal trying to trade onto Broken Blade, but Broken Blade almost wins the 1v1, has to flash away. Speaker now jumps forward and swipes away the bear. First blood TSM. Ruler flashes away from it. Speaker trying to do what he can on the map. One of the youngest players at Worlds, nice. the last embrace connects and Ruler has been caught out here. Speaker dives forward, his second kill of the game. Life forced away, TS yeah. Worlds groups appearance, he's doing a pretty strong drop, but he's been caught out just a little bit here. Loading Lullaby coming in, Biofoss looking for the charm, there's the Dawning Shadow as well, Showstopper gonna bring Speaker back, but he's got the Chrono Shift on and he's gonna come straight back to life. And now Clint is caught out of position as Broken Blade closes in the True Shot Barrage, rattles through, Bjergsen goes low, but now BDD is the secondary target. Life coming in to help out, Rascal can dive bomb in the storm, bring up a Biofoss. Dancing around Broken Blade as much as you can. The face break is going to pull them back. Fire Force has to. Very well right now, and they're utilizing their pressure so exceptionally well. And like, this is how you often. Power of the game in the bottom lane. And this is the cross map play from Gen G. They realize that TSM invests three members top. So what do they do? Trade TPs, invest. Look, secure themselves potentially the next Rift Herald. Now Rascal has found Broken Blade. BDD is on his way down and has the Ghost to pop it. If he thinks Broken Blade overextends, there's the Dominus. A slice and dice is going in. And now Rascal running up the river to the help of BDD. The showstopper available here for BDD. And Broken Blade, we have seen him out outplay a 2v1 before. And the rest of his team is on the way to try and help out the showstopper. Brings it back underneath the tower, the Kalnami, the Chrono Shift just in time! Broken Blade survives, Rascal has to flash away, and that bomb is ticking on his head. Doesn't quite take him, but the Dawning Shadow from downtown. Double F gets his first of the game, and Speaker is looking for a little bit more as he lands the spear, looking for the pounce to get dive in onto BDD, but will not go for it. Ruler, though, flashing in in the top lane, or jumping in, sorry, with the Arcane Shift, to try and catch out Double F. Biofrost now dies back onto life. Double F doesn't really want any more of this fight. Knows he doesn't have the ult, and knows that Ruler and Life are just that little bit stronger right now. Oh, really clutch stuff coming out from TSM to keep Broken Blade alive. In the 1v1 with the Blade of the Ruin King already completed, Rascal greatly overestimated his ability to win it, and he needed BDD's help. And I thought that when BDD altered him back underneath the tower, that was it. But Flash comes in from Bjergsen just barely enough to get in range of the ultimate to keep him alive. And they're able to get themselves the bot tower. So they end up trading, but then with the Rift Herald on top. There's some armor stacking on the side of Gen G, so Black Cleavers can help out. And with the threat of dive from Gen G, I don't mind Double Lift saying I need that little bit extra help, health to try and survive the initial burst that comes out from the LCK representatives. I think that the uh, I think the Black Cleaver can also just offer a lot of value. But I'm, I'm like, that is, yeah. Uh, maybe I don't play center enough, maybe I'm wrong, but that feels like quite a late 20 stacks. Does to me as well as the quickness comes in. Life here to help out Rascal, and Speaker dives in. Rascal already dead. The tanking from TSM is sublime. by Biofortuna. But TSM are kind of being danced around from two different sides right now. They're afraid of the Rascal collapse, but they're also getting poked out by Ruler. Meanwhile, Clint has gone back to base. He's now back in the fray. And if he lands his ultimate, here it comes. He's got the looting lullaby, and Double Lift is the target. They dive in on him. Broken Blade has to dance himself away, but now Double Lift is caught up in the midst of Gen G, and he will get taken out. Gen G get one. Rascal still chasing Biofrost away, and this will be the third dragon of the game for Gen G. What looks like a great initial team fight for TSM ends up falling apart. 
apart because Genji just buys so much time. You could see that TSM wanted to commit to that fight in the bot lane. They were like, let's go, four versus five. Flying hoot about any of this. Bjergsen coming in with the TP as well, does have the Chrono Shift back up. BDD is going to show stop at Biofrost back. Bjergsen almost taking out, has to use the Chrono Shift on himself. And once again, look at this, where are TSM? They can't get them in time. Bjergsen dive bombed in with the Stormbringer and BDD punches him to death. The Zillion's down, Biofrost. And next on the menu is the Mystic Shot finds its mark. Double if trying to dance around as much as he can, but it's a double for Ruler. And Gen.G have broken this game wide open. TSM tried to force a play onto the top side of the map. BDT was the target that they went for and it did not come through. Speak is going to be executed on the hands of Clid and his ultimate and Genji will be able to lock down the Baron. And Ruler flashes the Samsung Galaxy emote. Last time these two teams met was 2016 Worlds where Samsung Galaxy and TSM went one and one in the group stage. Ruler, the only player... Bjergsen can hold him, but while he generates pressure bots, they can just play through mid and top. And like this force is also a lot of the wave clear from TSM to disappear because he's forced. This could be what TSM need. However, Clid, aware and awake to the danger, puts the sleep onto the Rakan. And watch out, Eep Biofrost, as you have to dance across the wall to get yourself to safety. Meanwhile, the middle inhibitor tower goes down. Broken Blade on the menu for Ruler. He's on a killing screen now. 3 1 3 on this Ezreal. And the True Shot Barrage rattles across Biofrost. Flash forward, Mystic Shot doesn't quite connect, but that's an inhibitor down in the mid lane. And next up are these Nexus Towers. TSM retreats it to their base, and Genji are just taking everything they can in a heartbeat. The Oaks try to clear out the wave, hits the quickness from Biofrost, gets onto Ruler, but Ruler uses the QSS to get away and double it is dumped into the team. And now with the towers disabled, Ruler and Co can just sweep them away. The Nexus of the target, Speaker forced back to the fountain, and Ruler's playing with his food now. Biofrost chased away by the Ezreal. Bjergsen and Speaker back on the base, and Ruler are gonna go 2-0 up in their group. Gen G with a commanding. I think the LGD's comp is very well rounded and they're just going to actually go with the set. So, yeah, uh, I have a couple question marks around Fnatic Strap, but we'll get to that in a second. For now, I want to focus in on LGD's comp first, Ocean Dragon. So, nicely done. Oh, and look oh, at that! Mark. Perfect time. Everything coming together for LG. Oh, I like this. Using his prior to help cover and actually turn this potential dive around. Ripper going in with the showstopper. Longshank's going to get underneath the tower. Ignite is ticking down. Of course, self made taken that. Whipper with the Haymaker tries to shield himself up. We're going to concede another early Drake. Fnatic doesn't have a problem with that for the time being. Reckless and Hillisang are going to have to play a little bit more defensive because they recognize that they don't have any control over the bot side of the map. But it's just been a trade of sides of the map for both these teams. LGD talks about is how things like the mountain map can actually change a lot. Ooh, hang on, ultimate here. Nemesis, no, no flash. No flash, Pina's gonna pop the lands respite, and there is the kill. Shut down. The gold, Fnatic very healthily in the lead. A lot of that coming off the back of the top lane, right, Asher, jump. right now, because, oh, they're actually just gonna start this one off. Here we go, man. Infernal Dragon has been started. Whipper on the front line. Mark's gonna hook him up. Here comes the curtain call. Whipper with the Haymaker, showstop onto the back, trying to catch out Mark. Whippo is almost down as he falls. Peanut gets the kill. The Infernal Dragon does go over to Selfmade. Here's the corner of the Forge Grudge, As Zia uses the Chrono Bake to get back, and there's another hook, and there's another kill. Selfmade goes down. Fnatic get the... CC was flawless. And they're able to get themselves two kills. Of course, Selfmade with no flash. Break the day, LGD only care about the 5v5. They're grouping up for it now. They have the bot wave pushing. Here lands the hook. Selfmade's gonna get hooked. There is Mark so low. Almost goes down. Gets his gargoyles off just in time. Now Selfmade has fallen as well. We're gonna do what he can with the show stopper to pull Langjing forward. There's the base breaker as well into the sky out of the week, but the lambs rest bit just in time for Peanut. Bullet time comes out from Kramer as they try and open up Hillisang. Dived on by Xie, and now it's only Nemesis and... He had not done that. That fight could have gone very easily in the favor of Fnatic, so huge props to him, because this is also going to guarantee them their third Drake of the game. The team, you have that ability to drag people out of the Kindred Ultimate. Yeah, one. And TSM, only just a win behind them then. It makes this so much more exciting in the battle for second formation. As to where exactly Fnatic are, and LGD will gain mid lane priority. Hook's going to land onto Mark, there's the Gargoyles. Whippo, knocked up with the Depth Charge. Call of the Forge got available for Lang Xing. Showstopper's gonna pull him back, and here comes the curtain call. Mark already down. Wet Peanut diving off towards the backside. The unleashed power used on GA. And Langsheng will flash away. LGD can look for the re engage here. They've got the bullet time, but instead they say, okay, it's not a soul for you yet. You just have two Infernal it's Dragons. That, the name of that, yeah. Oh, it comes out here onto self -made. There's no flash on this Graves. TP gonna be used. There is the lantern. 
Call of the Forge God comes in from Lan Jing, lands it even through the smoke screen. Pippo's on the back line, but he's all on his lonesome, and there is the dredge line. Shut down onto Pippo. And for na now, Fnatic have to retreat back into their own jungle. LGD find a pick, don't really lose too much health at all. Nemesis is the next target here for GA, but self-made got caught out, and it meant that LGD can now start up this bounce. Yeah, excellent pick, and again, the lack of fight. Oh. oh, but that's huge as well. Unleashed power, it isn't quite enough as the chrono break comes out from GA. Reckless trying to open up. GA no longer has an ultimate. Now, oh, no real vision control here for Fnatic, as LGD call on the Forge God. Showstopper used on Lang Xing from Quipper from the side. Nemesis trying to do what he can. The hook goes down onto Mark, but here comes GA, and there go Fnatic. Reckless tries to do what he can, but GA is chasing him down. Infernal Soul LGD, only self-made, left alive, and he won't be for much longer. LGD are on the hunt, and it's a triple for Xie. Xie with the perfect flank onto the back line as Fnatic chose to go for the engage as Longqing throws out the ultimate. The idea from Bwipo was to stop Longqing from getting the second proc of that ulti off, but he ends up just making it easy for Kramer and Xie to play the fight that they want. They get the Dragon Soul, and now the Nexus is in their eyes. This might just be it. LGD from one one and three in Plains group. They have come alive here in the world's group stage. And what a group this is gonna be. LGD, LGD pick up their first winning groups.